Hey everyone, my name is Elliot, and today I'll be showing you a demo about a progress bar navigation screen. The progress bar navigation screen is a progress bar that will move as you page from one section to the next. I will now run the service to show you what that looks like. You'll notice that the first section we have here is shown in the panel, and then the progress bar is right underneath section 1 and then a text control is within it. If I click complete section 1, a modal pops up and lets me know if I want to move on or if I want to cancel and stay where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And then the progress bar moves from section 1 to 2 and then the panel title here updated to section 2. I could also return back to section 1 if I desired. A useful feature about the progress bar navigation is that content sections can be nested within each one of the section so as we page we can see multiple interfaces but remain in the same coach. If you'd like to learn more about the progress bar navigation have a look at our how to create a wizard template within our support site. Here you will see a combination between the progress bar navigation and a wizard menu on the left to create a template that can be used to create a sophisticated navigation. For the purposes of our demo, we will just be focusing on the progress bar navigation aspect of the wizard template. If we return back to the process designer, we'll now dive into the coach view. Within the coach view, there is an overarching vertical layout and within it there's many nested layouts. The top layout is a horizontal layout with a data control inside of it, another vertical layout with a horizontal layout, a vertical layout, and then output text, a horizontal layout with a progress bar, a horizontal layout with a vertical layout, a panel with a stack inside of that, and then within each one of the sections in the stack there is a well that contains a content box. Underneath, inside of a modal section, we have, we have a vertical layout with an output text, a spacer, a horizontal layout, and two buttons side by side. And at the very bottom, we have a horizontal layout with three buttons side by side. The coach view has three configuration options. A breadcrumb set, which is of type name integer pair and as a list, a breadcrumb step that is just a name integer pair, and then the summary panel title which is of type string. The configuration options that we defined are bound to the controls as follows. The breadcrumb step configuration option is bound to the breadcrumb set data control. The breadcrumb set is bound to the horizontal layout here that holds the labels for the progress bar. The breadcrumb set each individual label is defined within the output text inside of the breadcrumb set and it's here breadcrumb set dot current item dot name and then the summary panel is bound to the label of the panel here within the inline javascript of the behavior tab at the top there are many javascript functions that have been defined that are used throughout the coach view we have update breadcrumb function set breadcrumb step style calculate breadcrumb progress bar, next breadcrumb step, and previous breadcrumb step. If you need to learn more about how to define custom functions using Spark controls, you can look at our article on our support site within the how-to of the getting started knowledge base articles. A great article to start with is the creating custom functions article. If I return back to the designer, I will now go over the functions that are defined in the inline JavaScript. The first function, update breadcrumb, is a function that just calls set breadcrumb step style and calculate breadcrumb progress bar functions. The set breadcrumb step style function is a function that takes the current step and adjusts the label and buttons accordingly to which step it is on. The calculate breadcrumb progress bar function is what adjusts the progress bar to reflect what current step we are on. The next breadcrumb step function is how we move from one step to the next. 
we first determine if we have hit the last step in the breadcrumb trail. If not, we move on to the next step and we adjust all of the section titles and the current stack pane to be the next step. The last function is the previous breadcrumb step function. And this is the function on how we move back in breadcrumb steps. We do this by first checking to see if we're on the first breadcrumb step. If we are not, then we go ahead and set the current pane of the stack to be the previous one, as well as adjust this title of the section. The following JavaScript functions are called within these controls on the layout. The data control calls the update breadcrumb step function within the onload event. When we click the button to move on to the next step, the modal appears by this syntax here. When the modal pops up, we have an option to either yes to move on or cancel to continue on with the same step. Within the yes on click, we call return me.ui.getParent.nextBreadcrumb step. This is how you reference the next breadcrumb step function within the current coach view. Within the cancel on click event, we set the modal to set visible false so that it disappears. Within the previous step on the on click event of the button, we call the at previous breadcrumb step function. Within the human service, the coach that has the coach view nested within it, you pass in these configuration options. A defined breadcrumb set object of list name integer pair. The breadcrumb step you hard code the values in, here for example section 1, 0, and then the summary panel title you pass in as section 1. For the set, you use an initialization script on the palette and then within the initialization script under the implementation you define it as follows. This concludes our demo. I appreciate you watching and have a nice day.